Well, our study is one of the first to fairly conclusively find that at least in the first year of life, there are developmental delays among infants having deformational plagiocephaly. So we compared two groups, infants having deformational plagiocephaly and those who did not, and found that their scores were quite a bit different, particularly with respect to motor functions. In our sample of infants with plagiocephaly, about 20 or 25 percent of those infants are not showing uh, motor skills that most infants of the same age have shown. We use the term delay and not deficit because at such a young age there's, there's a temporal, a, um, uh, a temporary notion to that difference in functioning that we anticipate that most babies will catch up. But at this point in time when we looked at these babies they are behind typical babies of the same age without plagiocephaly. These may be very temporary and short-lived delays that on their own go away. Um, so we don't want to alarm parents at this point. We're just uh, noting that we find the association at six months of age. So at the very least, it, it functions as a red flag. So if you have a child with plagiocephaly, it would be, the first step would be just to uh, talk to your pediatrician who can easily do a screening of motor and cognitive skills and then make a decision based on whether anything else would be needed. In terms of motor skills, they should uh, reduce their infant's time in a stationary position, things that hold the infant stationary like strollers and cribs and play pens. They should get their infant out and to encourage movement, so to do games that encourage crawling and grabbing and reaching, rolling from side to side. In terms of cognitive skills, they can do things like read to their infant, even though their infant can't understand words, just to read to their infant, to tell stories and to rhyme to their infant, to imitate infants, uh, things that their infant does. Well, there, there seems to be a relationship between the back to sleep campaign and the incidence of plagiocephaly. So because the back to sleep campaign has been so successful in getting parents to lay their kids on their back during sleep, which is a very good thing, because that's led to a lower, a much lower frequency of sudden infant, sudden infant death syndrome. But at the same time, there's been this unintended side effect of in, increased incidence of plagiocephaly or flatness. In, in fact, some, some data suggests that in the 1970s, only about one out of 300 infants were diagnosed with plagiocephaly or flatness. And, and uh, some more recent data from 2005-2006 suggests that as many as one or two out of 10 infants may receive a diagnosis if they were examined of, of uh, plagiocephaly. But that, that, that increase in the incidence of plagiocephaly to most of us seem, to all of us really, seems like a very small price to pay for this very important reduction in sudden inf infant death syndrome. We're not really certain yet whether this means anything that's lasting. And, um, and you know, infants just normally develop at such different rates that if you, if you did a, uh, an assessment, say it were possible to assess every six-month-old infant in the world, okay, you'd find tremendous variation in development that a year later means almost nothing. Uh, there's so much catch-up, temporary delays. All of us, when we were developing, had we had one or two really good months <laughs> and then one or two months where we didn't show much development at all. That's just normal development. So really hate to alarm parents where they would think that their that their child is doomed to have to having developmental problems because at one one point in time they're temporarily behind. So let's we have to really wait and see. We we do want to tell pediatricians to be vigilant right now, but at the same time we need to look at uh, development down the road a bit before we can tell parents to get, you know, have parents really worry very much at all about this. Well, plagiocephaly is essentially is flatness at the posterior region or the back of the infant's skull. And it can either be symmetrical, so both sides of the back of the skull are flattened, or it can be asymmetrical, or one side is flat and the other is not. But the type of plagiocephaly we're, we're studying is called positional or deformational plagiocephaly. And there it's believed that external f forces shape the infant's malleable skull. So for example, laying in a supine position all the time, laying in an invariant or, or not changing sleep position can be one cause. 